Hi boys and girls, so glad you're here with me this Sunday morning. We're going to start with our memory verse for this week and it comes from Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 and it says, Moses answered the people. He said, don't be afraid, stand firm. You will see how the Lord will save you today. Our Bible point is going to be that God watched over Moses and his people and God watches over me too. Okay, what does it mean that you're watching over someone or something? Yeah, it means you're looking after them, you're helping them, you're taking care of them. How does it feel to watch over someone or something? Does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel happy like you're, you're doing something kind? In our Bible story today, we're going to see how God was watching over his people and running interference for them. I'm gonna start by reading from chapter four in our storybook out of Egypt. They will know that I am the Lord their God. They will know that I brought them out of Egypt so I could live among them. I am the Lord their God. Exodus 29, 46. When Jacob moved his family from Canaan to live with Joseph in Egypt, they were a clan of 70 people. For hundreds of years, God's people lived peacefully and safely in Egypt and their numbers grew, but then a new Pharaoh took over. He was afraid of God's people because their commitment to God was strong and they had become a powerful nation, just as God had promised. So the king of Egypt forced them to work as his slaves, but God had a plan. He was going to allow his people to be slaves. He wasn't going to allow his people to be slaves forever. God would lead them to the land he had promised, but first God had to find a leader to guide his people into freedom. Moses became a leader. A Hebrew woman named, named Jochebed gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Pharaoh wanted all the Hebrew baby boys killed, so Jochebed hid her precious child to keep him safe. Please God, help save my son, she prayed. Jochebed placed the baby in a basket and floated it in the Nile River. Miriam, the baby's sister, watched from a distance. When Pharaoh's daughter came to the river to bathe, she spotted the basket in the reeds. Poor child, said the princess. He is a Hebrew baby. I will keep him as my own and call him Moses because I brought him out of the water. Moses became the son of the princess. He grew up in the palace in Egypt, but when Pharaoh tried to kill him for harming an Egyptian, Moses ran to a desert. Moses lived in the desert of Midian for many years. One day on Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, Moses noticed a bush covered in flames. He wondered, why isn't the bush burning up? Suddenly a voice boomed out of the flames. Moses, Moses, do not come any closer. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have heard the cries of my people. I am going to rescue them. Go back to Egypt, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses was shaking. No, Lord, not me. Who am I to talk to Pharaoh? Send somebody else. I will be with you, Moses. Here is a sign to show you that I sent you. Throw your staff on the ground and it will turn into a snake. Moses did as God instructed and a snake slithered on the ground where the staff had been. Moses grabbed the snake's tail and it turned into a staff again. Moses saw God's power. Now Moses was ready to lead God's people. Signs and wonders. Moses entered Pharaoh's throne. The God of the Hebrews wants his people to worship him in the desert. Let the people go and worship God. No, said Pharaoh. I need them here. God Almighty is angry with you, Pharaoh. He will cause things to happen if you don't listen. So God sent a plague. The Nile River, river flowed red with blood. The water and all the ponds, pools, and fountains turned to blood. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and the water in Egypt flowed clean and sweet and clear again. A week later, Moses went to Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said no. So God sent a second plague to show Pharaoh his power. Frogs invaded Egypt, they splashed in the water, they rolled in the dirt, they climbed in the windows and jumped on beds. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and the frogs jumped back in the Nile River where they belonged. Then God sent a third plague, and dust on the ground turned into tiny, nasty gnats. They buzzed in the air. They landed on people and the animals. Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. Pharaoh said no. 
So God sent a fourth plague. Thick swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and the houses of the Egyptians. Every building and every barn, every porch and kitchen was covered with flies. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and all the flies went away. Then God sent a fifth plague. All the livestock in the fields of Egypt died. The horses, the donkeys, the camels and cattle, sheep and goats fell over dead. But Pharaoh would not let God's people go. Then God told Moses to throw handfuls of soot from the furnace into the air. He did, and nasty sores called boils broke out on the people and the animals. That was the sixth plague. Moses went to Pharaoh and let, let my people go. Pharaoh said no. So God sent a seventh plague. He sent hail and thunder and lightning. It was the worst storm Egypt had ever seen. The hail flattened the crops in the field and stripped the leaves off the trees. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and hailstorm ended. Then God sent the eighth plague. Swarms of locusts covered the land. They ate all the plants and trees. The insects filled the house of Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and the wind blew the locust away. Then God told Moses to point to the sky. Moses did and suddenly a thick darkness covered this Egypt. For three days, the people couldn't see anything. That was the ninth plague. God told Moses he had one more plague at midnight. The Lord said, I will go through the land of Egypt. Every firstborn son in every household will die, but my people will be safe. This will be the worst plague of all. Then Pharaoh will let my people go. It all happened just as God said. Get out now, cried Pharaoh. Take what you need and leave. So Moses led God's people out of Egypt. Moses led the people through the desert to the shore of the Red Sea. The people looked straight ahead and saw only water. They turned around and saw Pharaoh's army charging across the desert. We're going to die, they cried. Don't be afraid. The Lord will fight for you, said Moses. Be calm and watch what God will do. Moses raised his staff toward the sea. Suddenly the wind blew and the water piled up into huge walls, leaving a dry path through the center of the Red Sea. The people walked to the other side of the dry ground God provided. Pharaoh's chariots and soldiers raced after the people. When the entire army was in the middle of the sea, God made the walls of water crash down on them. The sea swallowed the Egyptian army, the chariots and the horses, but God's people were safe on the other side. All right, so God's people lived in Egypt, but it wasn't always a great life. They were slaves and had to work hard to serve the Egyptians. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, thought there were too many Israelites, so he gave an order to throw all the Israelite baby boys in the river. Uh-oh, watch out. A baby boy was born to a family who trusted God, and God was watching over this baby. His mother kept him safe for three months. Here comes somebody. Uh-oh, watch out. God was really watching over that baby, though. The baby's name was Moses. When Moses grew up, God spoke to him. I have seen the way the Egyptians are beating down my people, God said. Moses was nervous about this big job from God. Pharaoh was a powerful king, and God's people were a big group. How was Moses going to get everyone out of Egypt? What would happen when Pharaoh got angry? So God gave Moses a mission. He said, you're going to go and get my people out of Egypt. But Moses was afraid. But you know what? He had to trust God, and he did trust God, and he went to Egypt. Moses talked to Pharaoh, but Pharaoh didn't want to let the Israelites go. Who would do all the work if the slaves left? But God had a plan. He made a lot of scary, nasty things happen in Egypt. The river turned to blood. Icky bugs and frogs popped up everywhere. The animals all got sick. Hail pounded the whole country. It was dark even in the daytime. Pharaoh was stubborn through everything and wouldn't let God's people go. Finally, God decided to take away the oldest son from every Egyptian family. He told the Israelites, paint a special stripe over their doors so this awful plague wouldn't happen to them. 
That did it for Pharaoh. He decided to let those Israelites go. So that night, all God's people left Egypt. While they traveled, God was always with them. During the day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of a cloud. And at night, he guided them with a pillar of fire. God never left his people. God was with them all the time. What does it mean to stand firm? Moses stood firm and he kept going back and saying, let my people go. Yeah, it means not to give up. Don't give up no matter what, because God is with you. How did the people in this story stand firm in scary times? Yeah, again, they didn't give up. They trusted God to take care of them no matter what. God watched over Moses and his people, and he will watch over you too. So remember to always trust God because he watches over you no matter what. In the scary times, in the happy times, in the sad times, God is with you and he's going to take care of you. Just trust him. All right, boys and girls, have a great week. And remember that God is watching over you.